Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Give it to me, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> yeah. basketball fan then you're on the right channel as you can see by the title man i'm coming at y'all with a larry bird and magic junction interview reaction video i know a lot of people have been recommending that and i had just seen it so i was like man boom boom bam let me go ahead and get that out there for my subscribers i know they'll love it but you know how i do over here man i ain't gonna talk y'all deaf in this intro but before we get into this video do me one big favor man go ahead and smash that thumbs up button also if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe if you've been watching my videos for the last six months to a year and you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe let's get into the video now first guests are nba legends uh by the way two again on by the way two again i'm on um, drinking my starbucks you know i got an espresso shot that's pretty strong and i'm starting to feel the energy kick in so i might be on the same type of energy i was in the last videos but that's all good we're gonna have fun well the relationship is the focus of the new uh, Broadway play in Magic Bird, which opened earlier tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Larry Bird and Urban Magic. Clap it up for the legend, man. Clap it up, clap it up. 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 Crazy man. <laughs> Look, Thank you. to me, Thank you. I'm gonna try not to pause it too much, but Larry Larry Bird always looks like so nonchalant. Like he kind of reminds me of myself because if you see me outside of YouTube and you see me in person, that's like my demeanor too—a nonchalant kind of chill vibe. You know, Magic is like the you know you look at him, he when I see you or whatever, man, you know, Bird just he kind of just sitting over there chilling, you know. <laughs> I guess that's why I like him so much. You know, that's my type of guy. <laughs> I saw the um, the documentary the two of you did. They're some big guys, HBO, too. HBO, I'm yeah. right about that. Uh, I found it compelling. I found it moving. Uh, I found that there's so much humanity in, in, in the production. And uh, it stayed with me for quite some time. Now, uh, you guys lived those lives. When you saw the documentary, did you have the same feelings, or was it just, oh yeah, that's that's us, that's what we did? Yeah, they did a great job of capturing our feelings and uh, how we feel about one another. But it's really all about the competition. I mean, even today, if we could do something to co compete against one another, I still like to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, brother. Look. At it. Bird, he's just so chill. Like I said, you look at Magic, he laughing, and Bird's just like, literally just, you know, like he... <laughs> Magic, you feel the same way? Oh, I feel exactly the same way. I, I wish we could compete against each other right now. Well, you but know I... what you can do is you can go out and buy a baseball team now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I thought about buying the Cardinals, <laughs> but after finding out, uh, I found out Urban paid over $2 billion for the... <laughs> Dodgers, I know the Cardinals were at least 500 billion. That's, that's, uh, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, is it, when uh, you guys uh, knew each other uh, earlier, you know everybody knows about the, uh, the the NCAA championship game, 1979. Do I have that date right? But you guys actually played as in some sort of was it an amateur uh, summer tournament or like that? Where was that? When was that? Well, it was in Kentucky and. Uh, that's the first time probably in both our lives that we actually sat on the bench. And I don't think neither one of us liked that at all. But uh, because we were on the bench, David, and we got a chance to play against the starters every day and at, at nighttime at practice. And Larry and I were so upset, we took it out on the starters. <laughs> so we beat them every single day, right? But uh, Larry, was a special cat because it proved to me this man could really play basketball. I had heard about him, but I never 
saw him play live and in person, and uh, he was incredible. I mean, uh, he dominated, and that's what it's all about. So I went back home telling everybody, oh, this Larry Bird guy is for real. Right. And but you guys were kids then. I mean, you're a little older than Magic, but you were, what, 17, 18, 19 in that range right in there when that happened? I think I was 19. Yeah. Uh, 19, 20, probably 18. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you were, from the beginning, and correct me if I get any of this wrong, uh, because it's your life and what well, you guys ought to know. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, Magic, were you inclined early on to become friends with this guy because you, you were drawn to him because of his uh, basketball abilities? Was, was, was Did you want to be friends with him from the beginning? From the beginning, I wanted to be friends, but Larry didn't want n none of that. <laughs> uh, and so... <laughs> <laughs> this is the most I've never seen Larry go on last. Okay, if that's how it's going to be, then we have to be like this. <laughs> I started disliking him too. <laughs> uh, but, you know, he told me that, you know, I smiled all the time and he knew that uh, I, I will smile at you, but I want to cut your heart out at the uh, same yeah. time. So. Yeah. He knew that that was part of my strategy right. to get him, lure him in as my friend. He, he didn't want to show, demonstrate any weakness by becoming your friend. Now, did you feel what his advances to being a friend and you just rejected them? You were not interested? You didn't like him? I mean, what was what was your side of that? I, I like one more girlfriend. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you say advances, I get a little scared. <laughs> but, uh, you know, my, my thing was when you compete, you're really not friends, you, you want to keep an edge. And I was like that through high school and through college, but Urban is an outgoing guy. He loves everybody, he wants to high five, and you know, and got that big big smile. My goal was to try to take three of them teeth home with me. <laughs> Different look. What makes that so funny is because he's not lying. Like, that's what makes that so fun. That's the type of mentality that, you know, he got. That's what makes him him. So that's what makes it even more funny. He is not lying. Uh, Indiana, uh, Michigan, uh, a same generation of, of basketball, uh, similar players, identical players, similar uh, ideology about playing, anything to do with the Midwest or the times that you guys came from? I, I think it's the Midwest, and I, I think uh, when you think about Indiana high school basketball, I mean, Everybody says it's the best. You think about Michigan, we're right there with Indiana. And I saw our, how we were taught to play the game, both Larry and I, and then the way we wanted to play the game as individuals. And so we're mirrors of each other. Uh, I may smile a little bit more, but <laughs> the way we played the game of basketball was exactly the same well, because we would do anything to win. We didn't care about scoring points. We cared about winning the game and making our teammates better. I agree. And that's why I think that, you know. I agree. I will agree. that up. I will agree. So we were able to change not only basketball, but we were able to change the NBA, too. And so that was great. I want to talk about that in, in a little bit. But So now you guys meet the first time in this uh, summer league tournament, whatever it was. The, the next time is for the NCAA championship. Is that right? What, what, what did that, uh, and it was like a 10-point loss. Am I right, Larry? Well, uh, 10 points. <laughs> Thank you, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more, more like a 20-point loss. <laughs> when you're out there playing, and you get started in these games, sometimes you go, uh-oh, these guys are pretty good. <laughs> I had that feeling at halftime that these guys are too much for us. Now, now at, at the beginning of the game, did you meet uh, Urban uh, there? Why? <laughs> Do you, do you remember trying to talk to uh, Larry before the game? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> I, you I, learned your lesson. I learned my lesson. And uh, at that time, he was going after something I wanted bad, and I was going after something he wanted bad. So we didn't want to talk. We wanted to get it on and see who was the best. And, and, and in terms of uh, basketball, in terms of your career, in terms of your life and championships, what did losing that championship mean to you, and how did it affect you? Yeah, that's the toughest one I've ever taken um, because – you know, you got all your friends, um, you're at a college. It's really when you step away from home, I, I felt uh, in uh, Indiana State, they, they accepted me, brought me in. Um, it was tough, it's still tough. Yeah. But, uh, still still tough today. Yes. Yeah. And but how, how about you, Magic? What did winning that title mean for you? <clears throat> well, you know, 
You just heard him. It's still tough for him. <laughs> then you, you go to Los Angeles, you go to uh, uh, Boston uh, relatively in the same time frame, and uh, your careers in the NBA uh, take off, and, and uh, the rivalry uh, is cemented or be begun anew. And, and uh, uh, then there's somebody says, we're, we're going to sell shoes. We got a Larry Bird shoe, and we got a Magic Johnson shoe. Let's get these guys together and we'll shoot a thing. And you did want to do it, didn't want to do it? Well, I wanted to do it because we won the championship last that year and we beat Magic, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty good. All right. Yeah. And then, and then Magic, what, how did you? I did not, did not want, want to, to go to Indiana. Mm -hmm. They won the championship. I'm going to his. Sorry, sorry, guys. I'm sorry. This ain't going to take long. I just want to say this. If you look at Magic, Mike, uh bird it's like and you wonder what is it about them that separates them from their peers other professional athletes other professional basketball players and it's their mentality like you can tell how competitive bird is that was in what 79 when he lost that championship the state was well, on the, the college championship but look at how it still to a certain degree bothers him you know what i mean because he probably thinking in his head man Maybe if I would have done this or maybe if I would have done that, we could have came out victorious. But that's the winner's mentality. You know what I mean? Like, that's just, that's what makes those guys who they are. And I, I, I protested. I didn't want to go. Yeah. But the, the, the story is that the, you were reluctant to do it. And you said, okay, if you can get uh, magic. It's called negotiating, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Bird, he been on Dave this whole interview, man. You failed because you said, if you can get in here, we'll do it in my backyard on my literally your home court and that that's what happened now and he shows up what what was you when you saw him were you leery were you were you worried about he's coming into my house into my yard well i had my brothers there and i was going to fight him to <laughs> fight him and, uh, <laughs> and if i couldn't win him surely won him too yeah <laughs> felt, uh, you know my mom was pretty good about it she was all excited and my brothers were excited they loved magic mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're just, we were all, the town was excited about having to come in our hometown and, you know, come from a small town, it's pretty big news. French Lick. French Lick, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they must be from the town over. <laughs> but, uh, but he came in and we, we shot this commercial, had my mom fix lunch, and, and uh, it was neat, it was pretty neat. But that, uh, according to the documentary, that was the beginning of a, a friendship. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, it, it's accurate. Uh, we really didn't say too much once I arrived. Um, we we actually had never really interacted with each other. So we we got to the basketball court. We shot the first half of the commercial. Then it was um, uh, lunch break. And so I'm going to my trailer thinking I'm going to eat alone and he's going to go. He said, no, Irvin, come on up. My mom fixed lunch at the house. I was like, uh-oh. Uh, so, but I said, okay, cool, because so we rolled up, and Larry has this beautiful, that his house is beautiful, great acres and everything. I mean, green grass, it was unbelievable. So we go up to the house, and his mom just greeted me at the door there with a big hug, mm -hmm. and that sort of just calmed me down. I said, wow, this, I'm getting a mom bird hug like my mother would hug me, yeah, you know? Yeah. And so then she told me I was like her favorite player, and I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Worse worse. So, so now I'm really sitting in the seat now. I'm really, I'm waiting for lunch now. I feel good. But at the end of the day, what happened was we found out we were much alike. Midwest boys, grew up poor, hardworking families, uh, had the same values. And uh, I got to know Larry the man, and he got to know Urban the man. Now, did things change for you that day as well? Yeah, uh, you know, I've always respect, respected my opponents and, and, and him greatly because of the fact that uh, he was so good. Um, you know, everybody said there's a hate element to it. There never was a hate. It's just that I had so much respect. Yeah, it's competition. It's competition. Yeah, it's competition. At its finest point, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and I, he never let your guard down. And, mm -hmm. and you know, he was so good. And, and uh, I was trying to, you know, I used to have this thing in my head in the summer. I go shoot 700 jump shots that day, and I get ready to leave. I go, God, I know he's shooting 800. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and drop me back out there. So uh, it was mind games too. But I always respected him and his teammates. And we had great teams. And uh, it's just unfortunate that we got cheated in a lot of them games in the playoffs. Cheated. <laughs> cheated. <laughs> cheated. 
I, I think uh, when you talk about that episode where you guys uh, did the commercial and you had the lunch and so forth, I think I remember from the, the documentary that, that said that uh, you really liked uh, Urban. Uh, you were less fond of, of magic. Is that is that a correct? And what what does that what does it mean? Well, Urban the man's one thing, but Urban the basketball player, I had a little problem with him. <laughs> uh, it ended, of course, 20 years ago, but uh, there for God, what? Well, I can't really say what I think, but. Uh... <laughs> now, when, when you hear that about you, that he li he liked Urban, didn't like Magic, what? How do, how do you interpret that? How do you feel about that? You, you know what he's talking about. It made me feel good. <laughs> David, hey. I was a thorn in his side. Right. You know, I'm, I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be uh, go out there to kick his butt. That's what it, my job was, and his job was to kick mine. You know, and so I didn't want Larry to like me. He didn't have to like me, but you know, we both respected each other. I knew Larry could beat me if I made mistakes. If we didn't play our best game, uh, Larry made me have sleepless nights. Right? No, he did. He did have me because. I was scared to death that I knew he could beat me. Right. And so that's what a great player does to you that you have to go up against. And not only was he great, the Celtics were great. Yeah. So, um, and I was the same way, hopefully, uh, you know, in his mind, when he went to sleep, thinking about me. Because I, I was thinking about him when I went to sleep, but that was for sure. It's, uh, uh, do you... Let's forget everything else. The, the, forget the statistics, forget the, the friendship, how it evolved, the teams. Do you now, in your heart, believe you're the better player? I'm curious what his answer is going to be. <laughs> Actually, I, I've always said that um, I go by success, and he's won more championships, so I give him the nod. So. Yeah. Being very gentlemanly. Now, Magic, same question to you. you, you is uh, is Larry the better player? I, I've always said that Larry was the better player. You know? Really? Because he could do more, shoot from the outside, all those type of things. You know, you know, to us, really, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Because what matters to me is that I played against the best. I got to know the man, Larry Bird. Um and that we got this friendship right now. That's all that matters because the fans are gonna say, hey, I, Larry Bird was my man. Just like I run into a lot of Celtic fans. Yeah. You know, I used to hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I get that all the time. I get that all the time, yeah, right? Yeah. And so, but they say, I hated the Lakers, but why do we love magic? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so, but what matters is that we're friends now, we can do so many things together. I still will hate him now. We yeah. play checkers or basketball right now then both of us are changed into that those players that we used to be because we still want to beat each other. You, you think you were the better player, seriously, don't you? <laughs> uh, he was the better four and I was the better guard. Oh, there you go, that's a per perfect way of handling it. Now, Tell us, uh, there, there's a, uh, this documentary is, I, I, I think, the best sports documentary I've ever seen. And it's not because of anything other than you two gentlemen and who you are, the kind of men you guys are. Uh, and, and one of the points that is very, um, um, well, when you have your press conference and announce that you have HIV the infection, uh, your reaction and your reaction, what, 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 tell us about your feelings. Well, my feeling was the first time you know, I, I told Lon, my agent, I said, we got to call Larry. And I said, I want to tell him myself. Mm -hmm. And so I want to talk to him. Well, actually, we couldn't get a hold of him. Then Lon told him, and then Larry wanted to talk to me. Right. And so we were able to talk. And uh, the best feeling, uh, David, is when a friend supports you. Mm -hmm. And this young man came and supported me. Um, that's what it's all about. Forget the sports, forget the championships, right. the MVP. Uh, he came to my su my side and supported me, and uh, I'll never forget that. And and that's the type of man Larry Bird is. It, it uh, it's not hard to win. A lot of respect for Larry Bird, man. Uh, gladly, it, it, it's not the way it was in those days. In those days, if you heard anything having to do with this. It seemed like a, an immediate 
death sentence. Exactly. And, and gladly, like I say, uh, medical uh, treatment has progressed where it's not that at all. But that mu must have been what you were thinking. Yeah, we always heard nine years. Right. But uh, I remember the day I, we had a game that night. I always took a nap in the afternoon. I was, my wife woke me up and said, hey, uh, Lon Rosen called. You need to call Magic. So when I heard that, I couldn't believe it. I mean, he, I can remember back when my father died uh, and my heart just sort of, you know, he fluttered a little bit. When I heard about Magic, it's just like, I had no energy. I didn't want to, uh, as a person I can ever remember, not wanting to play basketball. And it, it, it had a pit in my stomach for days after, even after I talked to him, because in my mind, nine or 10 years, he's gonna be gone. And, uh, you know, you know we, we had the Olympics, you know, down the road, we had things we wanted to accomplish, but it's, uh, and man, here he is. Yeah, happily, things <clears throat> didn't work out the way we feared. Now, I mentioned we talk about it, uh, in the introduction, change the, the NBA, change professional basketball. Uh, give us a couple of uh, ideas how the game has changed because of you guys' career. Well, I think that, you know, <clears throat> the games were take the lead when Larry and I came into championships. Mm -hmm. And I remember when we beat uh, the 76ers when I was a rookie, the games came on at 1130 mm -hmm. that night. And so to put now the championships in prime time, the salaries that people make. I mean, yeah. we have, we affected a lot of the change well, that is happening. And well, then well, Michael Jordan came in right after us well, and well, took it to another level as well. And do, so, do you, do you guys see uh, kids playing in the league now? They say, oh, geez, this is the way I would have approached it. Or is that the game has changed so much that your style of play doesn't exist or it can exist? Oh, it, it can exist. Um, there's not many six nine point guards out there. Yeah. I want to chime in on that real fast too. It exists, but the mentality that these guys had, Magic, um, Bird, and Mike, the mentality, the current day players do not possess that mentality, that competitiveness, that want to go out there and compete. They don't possess that. So you got a lot of people that their skill set resembles them, but mentally they're just not the same. Uh, but I think what I see is uh, there's a lot of kids from our league and take it for granted, but there's also a lot of kids from our league that want to get better every day and they do the work necessary to, to uh, do better and better and, and they care about their communities, they care about their team. Uh, I see a lot of that. Uh, when I first came to the league, I didn't see hardly any of that. Right. I think what me and Irvin did when we came in, uh, people had started watching basketball again. And our uh, David Stern, which was our commissioner at the time, first year came in and uh, just took us to another level. Then you gotta remember Jordan Barkley, Patrick Ewing, yeah. Carl Malone, John Stockton, yeah. all of us sort of came in. They came in a couple of years after us. The league got good uh, right away. So uh, we, we were just happy. We, we didn't know any of that was going on. We just wanted to play and compete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, in 84, it changed. Yeah. But also we made passion, passing fashionable in the NBA. Most well, I, I think from uh, a fan's uh, standpoint, from a guy from Indiana who, who uh, grew up uh, loving and watching high school, college basketball and trying to play and so forth, the, the great legacy that the two of you leave is a uh, demonstration of, of how to be a guy, you know, just how to be guys, you know, and, and that's invaluable. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're thinking at home. You're thinking to yourself, geez, just like David Leno. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish you could come back tomorrow and the next night and the next night, but I know you guys got to get to the theater to rehearse your big number. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Magic Bird at the Long Acre Theater. God, what a pleasure to, to meet you and to see you again, Magic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll be right back with Jim Gaffney. Wrap it up for him, man. That was a good interview. Um, that was a very good interview, honestly. Like, and you know, like I was saying. I wanted to give some, I wanted to put something out different, you know, today. I was going through my bird videos and I just wanted to do something different other than just, you know, trash talk stories or stories about them or actual like highlights. And I want, cause I'm trying to get an understanding for Larry Bird, the man, because I look at what he's done throughout his career and I look at where I want to go 
And the success that he had in basketball is the success I want to have in what I'm doing. So I like to try to, you know, listen to certain guys that I have a level of respect for, pick their mind, and, and see how can I apply that to what I'm doing, and you know, get those, emulate those same, you know, those same results. But that is it for this video, man. If you guys did enjoy this video, do me a big, 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 big favor, man. Smash that thumbs up button. Also, if you haven't already, you made it this far, man, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. When you hit that subscribe button. Make sure that the notification bell is on that way you get all my, all my notifications whenever I do uploads. I'm uploading three videos a day. And just like the GOAT Drizzy Drake say, I got these videos coming back to back, man. I'll see y'all in the next video.